Okay. Here's the first one. Come on. Uh, what do you? Uh, what are you referring to, referring to when you uh, talk about the Gnostic Gospels? What are they? Can you explain? Uh, the Gnostic Gnostic Gospel. Yeah. What What are they? They are um, a number of books that were, um, uh, we had some knowledge about them from uh, uh, earlier on, but we didn't, a number of the texts we did not have access uh, to until 1950 when they were uh, found in the Nag Hammadi desert in Egypt. Uh, and uh, 1979, they were transla- all of them were published and translated into English. As I'm saying that because a lot of people had an impression that there are some very, uh, very secret things uh, that Christians do not want to um, uh, want to be public and so on. They've been public and translated into English and accessible to everyone since 1979. You can all read the Gnostic Gospels. They are uh, texts from a movement that is called the Gnosticism from the second and third and fourth, uh, fourth century, which was not a Christian movement, but some of them within the Gnostic movement, when they saw the success of the Christian faith, they they took some leading Christian figures and then published texts in their name in order to have more credit to their own message. So there is, for example, the Gospel of Thomas or the Gospel of Philip or the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, which are Gnostic Gospels. They were not written by those persons whose name they, they have, but uh, uh, people uh, assign them to, to that name. I often say that they, uh, I highly recommend people to read the Gnostic Gospels. That is the best way of not being interested in them, because they are such weird and strange uh, uh, writings. Uh, and